You can use the protractor of the work centre to cut short tapers on short work pieces up to about 500 millimetres long. It's very simple. All you do is set your angle. Now, I've set this at, say, 8 degrees, where this face is 8 degrees to the central table slot. Then place your wood in position. Um, you have to find a safe position for your fingers for this cut. Uh, obviously, you can't have your fingers like that. They'll be in the path of the blade. They need to be in close to the protractor where you can push the wood down on the table and hug it into the sandpaper face. Always, always rehearse this sort of cut and make sure that you can pass your fingers safely to the left-hand side of the safety guard, which, as you can see, is correctly lowered. And then it's simply a matter of gripping firmly and making the cut. You may need to cut a short taper on a piece of wood that's a bit wider than the piece you've just seen. And then you might find that you haven't got enough room between the upstand of the mitre gauge and the saw blade to get that piece in. Well, no real problem. Just relocate the mitre gauge in the right-hand table slot. I'll dial up the angle again. This time I'll be using the hypotenuse face. And now you've got substantially more room to get your workpiece in. Now, you will need a spacer to overcome that gap that's been created there. And uh, I've made up this little spacer out of uh, two bits of MDF screwed together. Now, these must be screwed onto the upstand of the mitre gauge. You don't want that slipping around during the cut. As you can see here, it, because of the inclined face, as I slide the mitre gauge and the spacer forwards and backwards, I'm changing the relationship of the pencil line to my saw blade. So it is important that you line it up in the correct relationship so that your blade's on the correct waist side of the line. And then when you've got that position, you might want to attach a little stop block like this to the back of the jig to push this piece forward. Um, you can hold it with your fingers, provided the piece is wide enough so that you've got good hand access past the safety guard. And you might also find it's a very good idea to put some sandpaper on this face so that there's no tendency for the wood to slip as you push the mitre gauge, the jig and the workpiece through the saw blade. Let's say you want to cut yourself a number of stakes for gardening purposes or maybe to set out a building site. Well, what I'd do is cut them all the same length first and then attach a suitable length sub-fence to my protractor with a stop block on it. That's why you cut them all at the same length first. And then with the protractor set at the chosen angle, I've picked nine degrees here, you can butt each piece of wood up against the stop block, hold it quite firmly back here and still keep your free hand to apply downward pressure to the protractor. And then by doing four cuts, turning the piece through 90 degrees after each cut, you should get a perfect stake, like this. If you're doing fence pickets and they were much longer pieces, I wouldn't recommend this method because the whole ensemble would be too difficult to push through and keep control of. I'd rather suggest you do this in the cross-cut mode. Bear in mind that the off-cuts created by this sort of taper cutting form excellent little wedges, which are very handy in building work especially, but also around the workshop. The main limitation in taper cutting against the protractor is the length of pieces you can cut. Well, if you want to cut longer pieces, and if you don't have the Triton sliding extension table, you can make up a jig like this one. You may remember this jig. It used to be the narrow repetition ripping jig, but I've added an extra piece of MDF to it by means of this hinge on the end. And it's uh, adjustable in the angle by means of this slotted strap here where I can tighten this wing nut when I get the angle that I want. 
There are a couple of other little niceties on this jig. These little hold downs. Now they're just pieces of wood mounted on slots to give you different adjustment heights for different thickness of material. And there are little nails protruding, just the points of the nails protruding on the underside, just sticking out about one and a half millimeters or so. And they'll help, help to grip the work as I'm sliding it through. All you do is put your piece in. Now this piece is about a meter long and uh, should be able to cut it with no problems. Make sure it's hard up against this piece of MDF. Line it up in relation to wherever you want to cut. Then press down firmly so that the nail points dig in while you tighten the wing nuts. Now that's gripped it quite firmly and as you can see the piece of wood now moves with the jig. I might just do these two up, but they're not pressing down on anything. We're outboard of the table, but they'll still do something. Those little nail points are called cat's paws in engineering, just like the sharp claws of a kitten, and uh, they dig into the wood without seriously marking it. Okay, we're ready to go to do a long taper rip. You will have noticed as I finished the cut, this wing nut just hit the safety guard. Well, it's always a good idea to rehearse these cuts before you do them and make sure before you switch the power on that you've got complete access through travel for the jig and the workpiece. To make these cat's paws is quite easy. You can either drive nails through from the top or just uh, drive some nails in this way, snip them off with a pair of side cutters and then file what's left to a sharp point. If all this looks a bit too much like hard work to you, then you can achieve a similar result by simply attaching a stop block to the angled part of the, of the jig and you can either have it at the front of the work, the leading edge, or you can have it at the rear of the jig, the trailing edge, depends on what's more comfortable for you and use your fingers to hold the work against the fence. This jig works terrifically if you're doing a lot of taper ripping. If you've just got the occasional piece to do, there is an easier way. Select your taper angle and then mark it. And then preferably use a long straight edge like this one or any other straight edge and gently touch it against the side of the saw blade and the overhead guard support. And when you're gently touching both of those on the left hand side of both, double check that you're still exactly on your line, which I am. Okay, that's my position for my board. I'll try not to mark that or move that at all. Then move your fence in. The fence, as I said many times, has to be exactly parallel to the blade. And move it in till it's almost touching the board at this corner here. And I can set that at 250 mil at the front and 250 at the rear. And then all that remains is to get another parallel sided piece of scrap this is just a bit of MDF. I've got three pieces of double-sided adhesive on it. I've used the high-strength carpet type tape. Whoops, I moved my board slightly. That'll do for the moment. And then by simply turning this piece over, holding it hard up against the fence, I can glue it down using the double-sided tape, glue it down to my workpiece and then Guiding this piece against the fence, I'll cut this angle because the wood's angled, not the fence. You can use tacks through here, if you wish, rather than double-sided tape, but double-sided tape is the best way not to mark your workpiece. And Then, when I remove the packer, you have your tapered workpiece. Another way for setting up for a taper cut is to mark your desired tape route on the piece of wood. 
then get a parallel sided piece of scrap a bit wider than the workpiece, lay it flush with the left hand edge of your pencil line, the waist side of the line, then slide it into position for cutting. Now this piece of MDF scrap is 185mm wide, I've set the fence exactly at 185mm, now I need to hold these two pieces together, preferably by using double sided tape, sandpaper between them, or the cat's paws, but then I can slide my parallel sided scrap along the fence and I'll cut exactly on that line there, giving me my perfectly controlled taper. If you need to cut a number of pieces to exactly the same angle, what I'd do is attach a batten to my parallel sided piece of scrap at the angle that I want, and that's just a little stop block I've put on there to help push the work through. Then you can run this piece of scrap along, along your parallel fence, locked in position, and you basically slide your workpiece under there until it hits the batten, that gives you your angle, then slide it back until it hits the stop block, and that gives you your starting point, and then it's perfectly safe to run these pieces through on the angle and they'll all come out exactly the same. If you weren't using the stop block, you should fit sandpaper at the underside of this face or perhaps even those little cat's paws you saw earlier to help grip the wood and stop it from sliding.